So, Tal's been here before. Tal Sadiq is a, uh, uh, he's, he's had his two minutes of fame on several occasions. And, uh, he's brought us water, and like I say, I'm just proud as punch of the donuts. I just, again, I just want to mention that one more time. Uh, if somebody didn't get a donut because I had two, tough. I'm old and my knee hurts, and if you couldn't get to them any faster than that, you're on your own. Uh, Tal's got a, um, he's got a background, as do most of us. Uh, he's worked in the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs and the U.S. Air Force. Uh, he's built and scaled an IT consulting business across the globe. Currently as a Manatee resident, he uh, gives back to the community through his dedicated work as a youth mentor, government watchdog, and a grassroots activist. Uh, Tal's wife, Kristen, who was sneaking around on the ground here, <laughs> was born and raised in Braden, graduated from St. Joseph's Catholic School and Braden Christian School. Tal and Kristen are parishioners at St. Peter's and Paul Apost Apostles Catholic Church. That is the longest church name <laughs> in Manatee County. I tried to sell them a sign once, and they said, why is it so much? I said, why is your name so long? <laughs> Together, they volunteer for a number of causes in the community, Tal mentors through Take Stock and Children, and serves the homeless with the Salvation Army of Manatee County. An avid history buff, he's volunteered in the Manatee County Manatee History Day competition as a judge for the junior group uh, documentary category and enjoys visiting local museums and gardens. He's a member of the 2023-24 class of Leadership Manatee that's put on by the uh, Manatee Chamber of Commerce. Uh, in Bradenton, uh, he's a Kwanan. Uh, sits on the Veterans Committee and is co-chair of the Membership Committee's community affiliations include Manatee Young Professionals, uh, Young Republicans, Manatee County Republican Liberty Caucus, Lakewood Ranch Republican Club, Longboat Key Republican Club, Women of Manatee County Republican Club, Manatee County Republican Executive Committee, and the Oaks Lodge. Thank goodness. <laughs> I, uh, I still I remember my daughter going, Daddy, what's a depot? Oh. <laughs> what? What's, what's a depot? And then it dawned on me. They said they have antlers. <laughs> That's the benevolent and protective order. Anyway. He, uh, he, uh, the University of South Florida Sarasota Manatee Alumni Board, the Anna Maria Island Chamber of Commerce, uh, and his own community advocacy group, Speak Out Manatee. Um, I'm just wondering, Tal, what, uh, the biggest question we're going to have is what days do you sleep? <laughs> just curious. Inquiring minds. He shares his knowledge of local government and business development within these organizations. He earned a bachelor's degree in organizational sciences with a minor in computer science at George Washington University. He is a proud member of the NRA. You got one of those? Yeah, I do. The rose one is All right. That's, uh, that's how you tell. That's the membership <laughs> card. For those of you who can't read, that's an NRA on it. Um, <laughs> he enjoys shooting trap and clays. For those of you who are uninitiated, that's when they go pull and they go. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm not going to explain the difference between the two because we don't have enough time. Uh, makes his own ammunition. What? You know, if you can. If you don't know, you don't know. Just take my word for it, for Pete's sake. He does word working, building computers, and supporting local arts in Manatee County. I have an electrician's electrical license and my wife won't even let me put an electrical socket to the wall <laughs> and you do woodworking at home wow all right a little jealous well guys uh if you would give him a warm manatee patriot welcome Cal <laughs> Uh, 
You can fix it, Sal. Are you going for me? All right. First of all, I'd like to start by thanking Jack May and the Manatee Patriots for inviting me here tonight. I uh, really appreciate the warm welcome. It's always been fun watching the videos online and coming in person to the meetings I can get to. Um, I'd also like to thank my wife for dealing with me and also helping me. So my name is Tal Sadiq. I'm running for Manatee County Commission, District 3. District 3 is on the map here. My long story short covers the north end of Longbow Key, goes all the way up to Anna Maria Island, and then along the coast you've got um, State Island, Terracia, kind of cuts over into Rabonia at the very top there as well. Uh, as far as Bradenton's concerned, you've got pretty much Cortez there. Following north of the Cortez line, you've got all of Bradenton there as well. Uh, redistricting happened in 2022, and so maybe if you were in District 4 before, maybe you were in District 1, I would encourage you to go to my website at votetal, votetal.com. I've got a tool to help you figure out what district you're in. Um, <clears throat> So my back, um, my, I'm running on a platform of restoring ethics, preserving our small town feel, and empowering residents over special interests. Uh, my background, as Jack May had said, has always been as an engineer. I've worked as a software engineer building weapon systems for the US uh, Air Force, Army, Navy, Marine Corps, and in support of our NATO allies as well. I've been a contractor and a civilian employee uh, for a number of years. Just what I love doing. Uh, my family has a long history of service going back to World War II. My, my grandfather was a, a kid in a poor village in India, learned three languages, became an army officer, served in World War II under the British. I had an uncle that served in Vietnam. I've had a number of, uh, currently have family members serving in the U.S. Army as well. So it was just my way of uh, taking a pay cut, giving back to do what I can. And then as far as my work in Bradenton, Qantas, uh, trying to do what I can for veterans here at home. I uh, oh, and, uh, just wanted to thank Mark for the recommendation on the donuts. That was a really good. Uh, that was a really good. Tip. Uh, Turner Donuts is a great place. Uh, we have a lot of great restaurants, a lot of great uh, places, and I love to support any any business in my district as well. Uh, so my I'm not originally from here, but I was born in I was raised in the Northern Virginia, Maryland area. Uh, met my wife about seven years ago now. We got married, moved down to Bradenton where she was born and raised in. And so I've uh, gotten to spend quite a bit of time getting, as you can tell from the community uh, associations and organizations, just getting involved within the community, getting to learn the people, and just getting involved. I, I never quite cared about politics. It was just never something I was involved in before. Uh, but I wanted to, to give back to the community with my, with my free time. You know, at 27, uh, yeah, right? I, the answer is I don't sleep, but uh, you just get through it, right? Um, but I, I wanted to get back because I, I've been blessed with success at a very early age. At 27, I was married, I owned my own home. Uh, spent a whole lifetime going back and forth from poverty to working class, My, you know, back and forth. My dad was a mechanic. You know, there's never a point in my life where I didn't have two or three jobs selling cars and used, you know, used cars and dirt lots or you know, selling auto parts on eBay or working a desk job at my university that to pay for the, the train to get to school and back uh, or you know, you know, taking the bus to high school. And so I've very, very, been very blessed with a, you know, a great family and uh, just kind of getting back to my faith. So I, I thought, why not just get back to the community? I've, I've, got, I've, I've got everything I need. I'm not wealthy by any means, but the most important thing people tell you to give back is your time if you can't give your money back. And so... And I'm just following in my in our family's legacy. Really, we've given back significantly to the community, focusing on kids who are at risk in the community through the foster care system. Uh, I mentor a student who takes stock, Man T.I. He's a cool kid, um, plays football. Uh, I hope to be able to lead him on a good path. And I'm learning quite a bit from him as well. Uh, but our family is a long and, and a, a deep and a deeply rooted history in Manatee County. Our family sat on boards for Manatee Memorial Hospital, the Salvation Army of Manatee County. Um, they founded Bradenton Christian School and the Bradenton Christian Reformed Church, and they've also brought manufacturing jobs to Manatee County. 
manufacturing of fire trucks, uh, apparatus and vehicle equipment through their dealership and partnerships uh, with manufacturing companies in the country. Uh, we've also given philanthropically to a number of organizations, namely to build homes for foster families in need of them, and also just supporting a great number of faith-based organizations in the community that are just trying to make the difference. And through all of that experience, I realized there's a political aspect to the challenges that we're facing in District 3. I'm obviously going up against, uh, in a primary election, my, my election is going to be on August 20th. Um, so I have some differences with uh, at a policy level and some at a personal level with the, the direction that we're going in. Uh, but fundamentally, let, let's, let's dive right in. When it comes to the issue of ethics, I think we don't need to go back too far to, to see that a county commission is not quite, in my view, in, you know, based on the feedback I've got from a lot of people, not quite working for us. Now, who here can raise their hand and say that your traffic has gotten better in the last four years? That a lot of laughter is there. That your that the homelessness, the rate of homelessness has gone down over the over the years. That you don't see panhandlers on 59th, 75th in downtown on 9th Street. Uh, I mean, who can say that their taxes are lower? Our county commissions passed two or three measures now to lower your millage, but utilities are are going to have to go up in the next few years. Your property taxes have gone up. Um, the cost of living certainly hasn't gone down. You can blame Joe Biden, and I certainly do. But at a local level, we haven't seen the cuts that, frankly, make make a difference, that make a dent. And I've talked to business owners all across the district and uh, talked to everyday people off the street, that wherever I can. And people are struggling. They're having a hard time just getting by. Our businesses are suffering labor shortages. You know, every industry, every vertical just can't hire people. But to me, that's... That's not a community that is going places, that's a community in decline. And yes, we're growing where four years ago we were at 411,000, today we're just north of 450,000. There's a, there's a hidden population within my district, especially because I cover the urban core and some of the you know, more blighted areas. There's a lot of people that just aren't doing well. They're not engaged in politics, but they're affected by it. You know, when, we, when our county commission makes decisions to, to cut off your, your access, your voice, to make public comments or call into meetings, that limits their ability to speak out on a variety of issues. You know, a good example is we had, the, we had this vote out earlier in January last year, uh, the vote to uh, approve about 10,000 homes in East Manatee County right next to the Freedom Factory racetrack. It's an historic track, formerly called the DeSoto Speedway. Now you've got two operating right there. And they built 10, they approved a project to build 10,000 homes about 700 feet right from the racetrack. And there were 15,000 public comments and public views uh, for that footage, hours of testimony. But no, every, and every commissioner said, well, we like the racetrack, but the, not a single one ever voted against it. I mean, you can make the argument for and against it, but fundamentally, when you have a lot of campaign money coming into the, you know, coming into this election cycle, especially from any of the builders behind those projects, you have to ask yourself, is the community better off with 10,000 homes and temporary jobs, or is it better off with an historic racetrack that's revitalized that whole community and it's become an international sensation? People know about Bradenton because of that track. They don't, don't, I mean, maybe you know about it from the island, but they come here from all across the world. I mean, it's a huge revenue generator for businesses out there. Another great example, um, we talked a little bit about another issue that matters for this community, given that this covers the dish, the, the island, is our, our water quality. Uh, today, I think the county commission just approved some motion to allow mining in, in East Brayton, East Manatee County. Well, that's okay. Okay, all right, that, that, that's the decision you want to make, but we have had an oil spill from Seaport Manatee that hasn't quite been explained. We've had Piney Point. We've also had development slowly but surely encroach more and more you know, within within our neighborhoods. If you look, I kind of went over there. But over here, you're going to have about 10,000 new homes coming within the district. And when they voted to reduce protections for wetlands, which provide a lot of you know, benefits for our community, it stores rainwater, it stores, uh, you know, filters out a lot of the pollution that gets out in the bay. That protects you know, our ability to have a strong tourism economy. And just having a good quality of life. Taken for me, a kid that came from you know, the, from the north where our water turned brown through endless years of development and finger pointing at different states, you're gonna miss it when you're gone, when it's gone. And so that's just another example of how a lot of the money that's gone into politics has influenced a lot of decisions that are hurting our quality of life. 
But ethics is also a little bit more about dollars and cents. One of the major, I would say, inhibitors of good business within the county has really been the county government itself. I've talked to a lot of business owners, restaurant owners, or small town, small time you know, hotel owners, and they tell me, Tal, it takes about one to two years for me to get a permit, just to get a permit pulled through for me to open a Chick-fil-A, which you, know, you had to have a mayor and a commissioner show up to open that one, or a coffee shop on Cortez, or, or just pick your place, it doesn't quite matter. It takes years to get a simple permit through, why? Well, nobody really quite knows. But somehow all these major developments are getting through, and I think you have to ask the question, who's the government really working for? You know, we're working to reduce the scope of government. Okay, great, but okay, where's the, where, where's the, where, what's the result of that? Our budget has gone from 1.5 billion four years ago to 3 billion this year. I don't think anyone can say our quality, or the services have, have gotten better. I, would, I wouldn't say that money's gone into infrastructure. We've dedicated about one billion towards improving roads, but I think that we're going about it in the wrong direction. But last but not least, I want to say, you know, we've gone through about four different county administrators since we since we started. You know, the county commission came on, and a lot of candidates, and I think in partnership, I would say partnership with a lot of the developing uh, development firms and their CEOs, started to campaign against a, a major road deal, a, a land deal out east in Manatee County. Musgrave property or Lena Road. It was, you know, the county did spend a lot of money, I won't lie on that property, but the goal was yeah. to make it cheaper and easier to move county services east, where a lot of the growth is happening. Um, you know, most people aren't quite moving west, but there's a lot of new, new construction happening east. And so the problem with that was you had, you know, the commissioner for this district and many others was sent to communicate with developers, send text messages, and just try and get ahead of this decision. And then when they came in on board, they communicated, you know, with major developers. Um, just as an example, uh, I don't have it pulled up here. That's fine. Yeah. To make sure that they fired one of the most competent county administrators that this county's hired in decades, and we've gone through four since. One is currently going to jail. Um, uh, yeah, yeah it, it, it's an absolute disaster. But my point being. There are a lot of decisions that are made that are very questionable. They involve a significant exchange of funding to campaigns, a significant amount of backroom deals and conversations that frankly we don't have the same level of access to. You know, my wife was added to a newsletter and I know a lot of people were from our commissioner. Nobody asked to be on it and we, so we emailed to say, hey, can we get off of it? Still haven't heard back and I think his assistant just quit too. That shows you where the confidence in our county government is. And so ethics at the end of the day, it's about restoring our values. How do we make sure that the person that we're going to vote in, if you vote for me, will I actually call you back and listen to you? And I think, frankly, that's just not happening this, uh, you know, now with this commission, in particular the seat. Just in one month in February, I've had more town halls and coffees than our commissioners had in four years. Uh, to me, that's a problem. I think whether or not you, just having the access and the ability to talk to your residents is very important to me. You know, the next big thing is preserving our small town feel. You know, we're, we're a growing county, I'm not gonna lie. And I'm not saying that we have to start coming in with a big government approach of denying every permit and saying you can't build here and, and picking and choosing who wins and who loses, but today we are doing a little bit of that. And I think we are growing in the wrong direction. I mentioned earlier we've got about a $1 billion um, plan to invest in infrastructure. But just in my district alone, we're not targeting some of the most important things that need to be addressed. This is Cortez Road, and this is an FDOT study. They did a workshop in October of last year, and they outlined this whole stretch of Cortez, some of which goes a little bit outside my district, but all the way out to DeSoto Square Mall, from DeSoto Square Mall to the island, as the third most dangerous corridor in this side of Florida, the Southwest Florida region, with about between 15 and 22, 5,000 incidents there. 27, fatal, oh, 29, 27 fatal crashes, 29 fatalities, 519 severe injuries. I and mean, some of the reasons included, you know, careless driving, red light running, feel, feeling to yield the right of way. Pedestrian bicycle crashes, we've had 11 fatalities, 70 severe injuries in that time. I mean, we haven't done anything on Cortez Road in four years. That development I talked about that's uh, in this area, it's called Lake Flores. It's gonna bring about 10,000, it's been permitted to bring 10,000 homes, so you can guess about 20,000 cars. 
This a little bit further down the road there, you've got a Peninsula by the Bay that's adding about 500 to 1,000 homes to start with. That's not including everything down south of El Conquistador. That project's been on the book for 10 years, in 2015. It's been up for a conversation and gone through various processes uh, for more than that. So we've basically had close to 20 years of this county doing nothing. And now our focus is on widening some of the streets that kind of go in between Manatee and Cortez. I don't really think that's helping the fundamental problem. I was at a, as I, I was actually at a, an HOA meeting earlier, uh, late last year, and there's a gentleman who, he was blind, he uses a service dog to get around. And he tells me, Tal, the county took out crosswalks. We don't have, we have, we don't have any traffic lights. And so anytime you're getting out of one of these neighborhoods, you're making a dangerous left turn to get out. Uh, there's no roundabouts, there's no lights or stop sign even, not that they help, but there's nothing really enforcing some good traffic behavior. And so we're losing lives left and right. We're spending money, not, we're not spending money solving that problem, but where we are spending money are medians to make our streets look pretty, I guess, I don't know. That's not, the fun, that's not solving the fundamental problems in our community. Sure, we're funding pickleball courts, we're you know, replacing some pipes here and there, but it's not solving the issue that's killing people in our community. It's not making our roads safer, and it's not getting people through that traffic faster. I talked a lot about traffic. This district covers some of the most, some of the worst congested community, worst congested roads in all of Manatee County. Mm -hmm. You've got all the traffic that backs up from Manatee Ave when you're going out to the DeSoto Bridge that essentially kills uh, what Manatee Avenue all the way out to 43rd uh, some days. Cortez, that's always a nightmare. Uh, nothing's really been done to solve that. But what our county commission's done, in particular in the seat, is rubber stamp every single development that comes across their desk that's funded by their major uh, campaign donors. And there's only three of them. I'm not gonna name them and make them famous, but they're, they're some of the most, I mean, just in this district alone, they're putting in about a half a million dollars to win and hold one of the weakest seats that they ever could. Just to give you some context, a typical county commission single district race, you can expect twenty to $40,000. Maybe with inflation, you're pushing fifty nowadays. But think about that. Half a million dollars. No commission seat. And that includes dark money, political, uh, you know, political committees, and a lot of money on the back end, plus half a million, half, quarter million up front. Uh, yeah, quarter million up front. That's unprecedented. That's numbers you use to run a state house campaign or fund a, a congressional campaign. No commissioner in this race right now, not even the at large, has raised that much money. And you have to ask yourself you know, why that is. There's no major development happening in this, in this side of town. This is done. That's already going to be built out. All of this is done. That's outside the district. Um, this is good. That's, you know, Robinson Preserve. You're not going to build anything there. Sneed Island, that's not, nothing's happening there. And a lot of the development is really subdivisions, new, but I don't see any wetlands or farmlands you can build on. And so the question is why? Why, why are we putting so much money into this, this race among others? And I, and I urge you to keep that question in the back of your mind um, because frankly, it's obscene. You know, they're, we're, we're, you're gonna see an avalanche of a lot of mailers, of a lot of money coming in, and it's gonna try and convince the uninformed voters, not you, because you're informed, but it's gonna convince a lot of people that you know, just because you've got uh, the most, you know, more flags and more guns than their mailer, that they're more American, or they're addressing the issues that matter. Um, and then someone with a funny name just uh, has, a, has a different perspective. Uh, that's just not the way that I think this, uh, th that the direction that we should be going in. You know, we have to address the fundamental issues, and I think just understanding what's at stake, I've, I've reached a point where I've, I've, I feel comfortable with where I am, and so they're not after what I've got, but they are after our future. And I'm just the one standing in their way because I've got the ability to get out there, talk to people, raise money, and just spread the message that we have to restore our ability to make decisions within the county. And today that's just not happening. And so preserving, our, you know, preserving all of this, the small town feel, it's just about taking, you know, taking control back and funding the things that actually matter. I want to talk a little bit more about some of the other issues that we're dealing with in the county. This is the, this is the water line that goes out to Anna Maria Island. It's the, it's the backup line, the main ones on Cortez, and it fell in, <laughs> it fell in June of 2023, I think, somewhere around there. Just fell. 16, 16 um, connections just rusted away and fell in and allowed the water line to just fall in the water. Um, 
a, a follow-up story was done and they determined that there was no maintenance history at all within the county government. They had to physically talk to people and ask them, hey, what, you know, what do you recall? What, what, what do you think happened here? It's, none of this was ever documented. None of this was ever following any established procedure or process. The damn thing just fell in the water. And that's a picture of, uh, I want to say like a few weeks ago. It's still there today. That's, that's the, the county solution to the number one tax generator for Manatee County. Let's, let's get rid of a sidewalk on the, one of the Manatee Avenue bridge, no, one side of the bridge, and just let that sit there until 2029, 20, 2030, whenever the new bridge comes in. That to me is not a symbol of an economy of a government that works for its people and is growing and prosperous. This is the decline that we're talking about here. And I've been to Terracia where they've got even worse water issues than you can imagine. I mean, their, their water line looks worse than ours. Um, their water quality is terrible. They have to drain every, I think once a week they were telling me, because they've got so much, uh, kept, you know, so much buildup of you know, all this stuff that makes their water taste terrible. They just let the fire hydrant run you know, 24 hours, one day a week, just so they can flush the system out. No investment's been ever, ever been made. There, no commissioner's ever bothered to go out there and solve that problem. They didn't even vote for this commissioner. They were just appointed and given one because the redistricting. So there are fundamental problems within our community that are not getting addressed. How can we continue to prosper as a community to preserve what really brings a lot of people here, what brought myself here, brought my wife and I back here, if we can't solve these problems? Medians aren't going to get people, isn't going to get a single mom with a kid that's struggling just to get by on, on one job from point A to point B faster. You know, putting this up on the bridge is not going to draw more tourism. It's not the way that we should be going as a county, but that's where the priority is. And sure, they're funding a lot of roads and a lot of different things, but they're not making the difference. And on 59th Street, it's a great example. 59th Street doesn't connect to any other, other road other than Cortez and Manatee. That's 59th right there. They're looking to widen this, they're looking to widen this street. And I think the process that they, they went about doing this was absolutely disgraceful. It's the most, it's the most liberal thing I could ever see happen here. <coughs> my opinion. Um, 59th, they're looking to widen that all the way down to you know, four lane and all the way through. And you know every year our commissioners, I'm going to be going door to door as well, we go door to door, we tell you all the great magical things we're doing and we want to you know, so, and, end world hunger, solve world peace and make the government small and all that. Well, not a single commissioner went door to door to tell these people that seven of them were going to lose their homes so that this road could be widened. Nobody knew about this. That's why you still see, say, 59th Street signs just right there. I mean, there were public meetings after the fact, but one line stood out from, to me from the road study, and it said, public input was not solicited due to an abbreviated schedule. Seven people losing their homes because, what? Yeah, eminent domain, nobody cared, but they'll be happy to go out and get your votes. They'll be happy to send you mailers. And in the, same, in the last thing I'll say about this, about this piece and how we're funding infrastructure is uh, perhaps one of the most disgraceful things I've seen come from this county. Uh, but out east in Manatee County, there's a, there's a development, uh, another, you know, one of those 5,000 you know, 5, home type projects from another donor. The county had a choice to make. They wanted to build an access road onto the Trailix property. Uh, they're an old couple, you know, retired, you know, fixed income. They're not wealthy by any means, but they have a lot of land. But that land happens to just come up right next to this development and in between the racetrack. And keep in mind, you still can't call into meetings and be heard. You, oftentimes the agendas change and you submit public comment and they don't even read it. They don't even read comments that you submit before the deadlines. And so what happened is they dragged these, this couple over who were in tears crying about losing their property. But more importantly, seeing a road built over the burial site of their son in order to get a single road to benefit a private development. No commissioner for that district ever bothered, no commissioner from any district ever bothered to reach out to them. They, 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 they made them do a whole song and dance of coming, dragging them all out from Mayaka to, to freaking Bradenton. All that traffic, all that, just to, I'm sure they were in tears the whole way through, just to have to make their case. That, that's not how government should work. That's not how any of this should work. I'm firmly not a big, I'm not a big fan of eminent domain, but I just, but beyond that, there's a deeper issue. And it's just that we just don't have a county government that's working for us. Because if we did, that would never would have happened. I don't know what ended up, you know, the county ended up saying no after the, the whole spectacle, but um, you know, the racetrack is going to end up having that road built right through their property. 
but, but that's one of the problems that we have within this county is we're not doing what's right for the communities and for the people that live here. And the last thing I just want to say is that it all just comes back to empowering people over special interests. To date, I'm proud to say that I've outraised all my opponents, the Democrat and the incumbent, on small dollar donations. I've had a great amount of success with getting the message out. Everyone tells me tell. I'll vote for you. I'm never going to vote for the Democrat. I'm certainly not voting for your opponent. In my district alone, and to Jack's point earlier, we have created as a Republican Party one of the greatest openings for any Democrat to run an election and possibly win. In that district, we've got Democrats and independents outnumbering Republicans. And in a year where you have abortion on the ballot, we have Trump versus Biden, and nobody gets Democrats out than uh, Donald Trump running for an election, plus abortion, there's a legitimate chance that if I don't make it through the primary, we will have a, a liberal Democrat sitting on this commission taking us back to you know, the days of where we had to focus on you know, social issues and distractions that you know, put us further behind as a community and just not, not reflect the values that we want to see happen on this board. We cannot do that. We've created this opening by allowing unethical behavior, by allowing commissions that don't respond to residents, and allow themselves to allow the campaign dollars coming in to influence their decisions. Now look, I've, you know, I've, 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 I've pierced the veil, I've seen how things work behind the scenes, Developers have said, all right, Tal, we're happy to run mailers for you. We're happy to donate. Just, you know, imply, they're implying that, well, I'd have to make decisions to, in, you know, to, to influence them. And to me, that's just, not, that's just not right. And to me, coming in, wanting to represent and build a community for the next generation as part of that next generation, I think about why I came here in the first place. And it wasn't because of this. You know, it was because we just had... An amazing community, you know, great values, small town you know, values that you just don't find in St. Pete, Tampa, or Sarasota. We are going to grow, we are going to expand, but I don't believe that the way we're doing it, without talking to people, without gathering ideas from the community, is, is, a, is a sustainable process. It's just not. And we're going to continue to rack up losses to Democrats who are again and again going to run on distractions and promise great things and under-deliver. And so for me, my ask of you is all this. You know, if it, I'm running a I'm running a, camp, a grassroots campaign, and I appreciate anything that you all can can do to spread the word. Whether it's sharing the, what you've heard today with people you've talked to, uh, or donating to my campaign, whether it's five bucks, ten, or or fifty, or a hundred, it's going to help make the difference. I'm not going to raise a half a million dollars, but I will raise enough to get the message out there. And the message is that we need to take back our county from special interests, empower our residents, and get our county back to working for the people. Rua! Thank you very much. Questions? Sometimes speaking my native tongue. First. Uh, Tal, who is your opponent? Or who are you running against? I want to make sure the mic gets it. Oh, I turned it. Sorry. Minor technical details. I'm the tech guy. <laughs> Oh, here we go. There we go. See if that. Uh, there we go. Awesome. You want me to run around with the mic? I'll leave it on. Let's give her a hand. She's going around with the mic. Yay, Margaret. Uh, the opponents, you asked um, Kevin Van Austin Bridge in the primary, and then you've got the Democrat in the general as well. I feel pretty confident that coming in with the amount of support we can raise, uh, the Democrats will, they're running, they're not running a strong candidate, but they will win if I don't make it through the primary because, frankly, we just have a lot of Republicans that, I, I was actually, at a, I had a coffee yesterday at the Starbucks on 59th and Manatee, and some, some guy just came up to me and said, Tal, I left the Republican Party and became an NPA. The NPA is the, is, is the rising class political uh, you know, designation within Florida because you have a lot of Republicans that are just unhappy with the way we're governing. Um, and I think as a party, we've got the right values and the right message. I just think we're taking it for granted and we need to start getting back to putting stronger candidates in to win. But the risk is very real. We, will, we could have a Democrat win District 3. It's never happened. I went through the voter rolls um, through the... the, the, the to the supervisor of elections 
de uh, his uh, historical data, and there's never been a Democrat to run for District 3, at least in 20 years. We've created a massive opening. Next question. Tell, uh, where do you stand on the parking garage proposal for Home Beach? <laughs> Just curious. Yeah, I love that question, the P word, right? I spent a lot of time, obviously that was my, that was a big, that was a massive issue for us for a long time. And I spent a lot of time trying to gather that, you know, build an, build an educated opinion by talking to, I don't know if I can do this right, build an educated opinion talking to mayors, elected uh, county commissioner, you know, county commissioners, town commissioners, city councilmen and women from Longboat to all the three island cities to Bradenton. And fundamentally, I don't, I don't approve, I, I don't support the parking garage for a number of reasons. Number one, I think the process by which we went about trying to get the permit through the state, involving them and getting them dragged into this mess, to uh, you know, approving this and trying to fund it, it's been, it's been, it, it's not, it, we haven't done it in a conservative way. The way we did, it, we went about doing this was, you know, making, uh, pushing this narrative that it's rich people trying to keep out, of, you know, the working class from everywhere else. And look, my, you know, since I bought my home, it's doubled in price. I cannot afford to live there. And a lot of islanders feel that way as well. Certainly you've got a lot of wealthy people living there, Long Key and West Bradenton as well. But the problem is not that you had a bunch of rich people trying to close the island. We had a legitimate problem where the county was just pushing far too much growth onto the island. Of course, everyone wants to go to the island. I, I, I encourage you to keep going. Um, but we just didn't build the infrastructure to support it. But we didn't think intelligently about how we can make sure visitors can get to the island and also residents. I think residents have a right to park on the island. And I think with that, you know, coming in you know, as a commissioner, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll be able to work out a better, you know, negotiate better, come from a position of strength with the city of Holmes Beach and also the island cities. Um, but $50 million for a parking garage, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's personal ego that has gotten before a good policy. I don't think we should be, and, and keep in mind the very first bill to allow the parking within Holmes Beach, not only allowed the state to grant a permit to build there, but it also took away the island city's autonomy. And it made this big argument and show that the island's insolvent and you know, wasting money on police and whatnot. You can make that argument about city of Bradenton. What happens if city of Bradenton takes off a county commissioner? Are they gonna lose their city incorporation too? You know, what happened, you know, they've got a parking problem downtown as well. What happens to city of Palmetto? Palmetto's growing, I think it needs a little bit of help to get there, but they're not generating as much money as the island. Is Palmetto next? What else is, do we need to continue to consolidate power and centralize it like some communist government in Russia or, or some other country? Or do we allow people to elect a government and represent them fairly and put in people who can negotiate better on their behalf? You know, for me, I don't support a parking garage because it's way too expensive. It was not done in good faith. And it doesn't solve the fundamental problem, which is traffic. Uh -huh. right, thanks for coming out. So, so. The reason there's so much money in, in KVO's campaign is because the developers, they don't care about your district. They care about the vote. They want to keep that 4-3 vote or that 5-2 or 6-1 vote. They don't want George up there as the Lone Ranger with another guy like you coming in, switching, switching the development vote, hopefully. So the money's pouring in, not for your district. They could care less because, like you said, it's mostly built out. They're securing KVO's vote for those 5,000 developments out there by the racetrack and farther east. That's all that money is for, is for the vote. Because I've said this before, you say, you say you're district commissioners, you're not. You're all at-large commissioners because you vote at at-large things that are not in your district. That's what they want to secure. So, so that so oh, yeah. oh the question. Um, Good comments. Which state your name, county residence, and you have four nineteen. the question is, uh, I'm glad you're coming out here and you'd be more engaged. The the town hall things are great and um, you know, good luck. I appreciate it. And go ahead now. No, Glenn, Glenn I, I really appreciate your tireless work, your, your, your effort, you know, the amount, of, the amount of effort you put in to make sure that, you know, the homeless veteran population has a, has a voice because they, they don't watch meetings, they can't see you talking for them. You know, when this county did the tunnel, 
they tried to do a, a, it was a big hit job on Tunnel to Towers. But long story short, the private sector was paying for everything. We just gave them land. And to see commissioners spread misinformation, especially in my district, using taxpayer dollars, calling it a homeless shelter, and then arguing with these guys. One guy, one CEO flew in from Hawaii after the fire. He flew in twice, uh, just a bit, just to show people he's trying to do a good thing. They're not, you know, they're not for-profit evil corporations. We're, we're not talking like anything like that. Um, so I really appreciate you, you know, uh, you know, us working together and just getting the community to support our veterans experiencing homelessness in Manatee County. Tal, assuming that you will be sitting on the board, and I, I believe that with all my heart, what are your plans considering the potential makeup of that board, the opposition that you're going to have facing you? How do you overcome that? to be able to complete your mission? And what can we do? Show up at board meetings uh, on your side of, our side of uh, arguments, or what, what can we do? Once we get you elected, what can we do to help you do your job? Number one, keep contacting all the other commissioners. I've, I've received, when I was just talking about issues in front of the commission, long before I cared about making the run, I would just email them and Cruz would respond to me and I'd get some other responses as well, um, rarely from mine. But for me, if you look at the district here, I've got the town of Longboat Key covering the north end, they've got a district. You've got three island, you've got three island cities here. You've got the city of Bradenton and I have to work with the city of Palmetto to cover this area, a little bit of Sneed Island, that city of Palmetto, and then uh, Rabonia as well. This district can either be one of the weakest county commission seats most powerful or you can recognize that as I do that it's not my job to come in and start to dictate and threaten cities residents but it's rather to build bridges and partnerships in my line of work I've you know if I don't build the right piece of software and I don't work with the right people I don't talk to you know the guy that's going up in that F-22 and understand that he knows how to you know, you know work with what I built they're not going to be on mission they're not going to be on target and they very met they, they may very well get killed in action you know, whether it's a submarine I'm building something for or, or, or even working, it's all just about playing nice and understanding how can you build bridges and partnerships. And for me, I think I've got a great relationship. I have been endorsed by a chief of police and a mayor on the island. Um, there are, trust me, if there wasn't a, a, a contested primary, I'd have a lot more, a lot more mayors and uh, commissioners endorsing me as well. I can tell you that much. But to answer your question, what can I do in the face of like, if I'm crew, like cruise one day, and I've got six to one votes. For me, the strength of this seat comes from the fact that we're the, one of the number, we're, we are the number one tax revenue generator for the entire county. That ought to mean something. And also partnerships with cities is not to be overlooked. There's a lot of power that can come from banding together. I mean, that's what I did in this community when I, when I, was, I was still, I was still a bit of a nobody, but I, I just talked to people from different clubs. I, I was a member of Sarasota County Young Republicans. I talked to some of the you know, nonprofits and faith-based groups. That's how I connected and tried to organize people to get Tunnel to Towers approved. That's how I came out to speak out against the lack of public input and comments. It's just what I'm good at. I love making connections, bringing people together. Last thing, as far as what you can do, just tell me when I'm wrong. Because that's just something you don't see in politics a lot. And I think I, in, my, in the IT world, you thrive on being told you're wrong and failing more than you thrive on success. And I find that... The more critical feedback I get from all of you, whether it's Tal, you, you suck at your job, you know, quit. Uh, to, uh, I'm sure that's going to come. Uh, or Glenn comes up and tells, for the record, um, says something, and I, I hope you do. I really hope you do. Um, but just tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me where I'm off target. And let's. And, and, and I'm telling you here now, as I will, as your commissioner. Um, I will, I will always acknowledge and, and, and take into account a lot of opinions, and I'll be more than happy to tell you when I'm wrong, because if I'm wrong, then you know, you know, 20 years from now or 50 years from now, when I'm 50 or 80, I'm gonna live with those decisions. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, yeah, I'm 29. Um, I'll, be, I'll be sitting here and maybe some young, yeah, some young punk is up here trying to run for a county commission seat like I am now, and I don't want to sit there and say that I didn't stand for my values, that I didn't put, you know, that, I, that I never offered my values for sale, and that I didn't build the right future for this kid so that he or she can run on the right issues. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to impact you and every, in my generation and every generation. Good answer. Okay.
So now, you and I had the um, fortune of entering the wreck on the same night <laughs> after many months. And that was a very nice night back in October. So last night, I want to thank you for staying with us, the majority, when your opponent left at the beginning. And I want the group that wasn't there last night to know that. That's very important. There were many good things that happened last night at that meeting, a lot of discussion. And we don't need to get into that. My question for you is, assuming we can get you on the board, um, is there any magic you can do with your software engineering background to get the public comments turned back on so the people of this community can start communicating with the board again like they're supposed to be? It's very simple. We, we already do it now. In fact, uh, my opponent was calling in sick for one of the commission meetings about a few weeks, a few meetings ago this year. Uh, we've had a commissioner take a meeting from New York or something like that. We had another commissioner who was afraid of taking public comp, was afraid of the public retribution from, I think, the, the racetrack or Trailix property issue, one of those. She was upstairs just taking a, a Zoom meeting upstairs. We can do this now. I've been to every town commission meeting, every, every well, one town commission meeting, and every city commission meeting. Most, if not all of them, have a way to dial in. I love what City of Bradenton Beach does. It's, it's a very, like, the mayor shows up in a hoodie. It, it's an awesome vibe. Uh, I love it. Shorts, hoodie, maybe I'll do that, represent the beach one day. No, probably not. No, I'll, I'll have a bow tie on about that. But we, we can do this now. We simply choose not to. I think when I made that comment late last year, they made some story up. The response was, oh, well, we need to figure that out. We need to put a plan together. No, here's my, here's my phone. Here's the Zoom account. Log in and, and give me a call and just talk. We've implemented this. The county commission said, because of COVID, we're not going to do this anymore. We did this, and now we're not doing it anymore. No, they've cut off public comments and Facebook posts. They've killed your ability to call in. They don't even read your comments. Bradenton Beach reads your comments. And the other cities let you dial in to meetings. On the island, and you know, city of Bradenton does a good job. You can't be afraid of seeking public comment. You just can't. I pay your, your salary. You cannot be afraid of just taking critical feedback. You can't be afraid of the Glens of the world and, and all the other people in the world. Well, maybe I could be. You can be a little scary sometimes. We cannot, we cannot let fear dictate our, and restrict our residents' ability to speak in front of any government. We lose that ability that we're just a, a, you know, a communist country where they just refuse to allow any form of speech and only allow whatever the state lets you have. Whatever opinion the state lets you have, and that's frankly what we're having today. Next question. Thank you, Tal, for coming tonight. It was interesting. I'm glad I didn't miss it. I learned a lot. And um, really hoping for you guys and praying for you. And I've got two questions, if we can take two. Yeah. The first one, I want to know how you feel about government mandates, especially the mask and the vaccine. Uh, and then for me, I want people to make the choices for them and their families, their God-given lives. I want to know how you feel, and also about, is there any discussion of a sky bridge or a sky ride from Bradenton to the island? Thank you. Yeah, first question, very easy. No mandates. Everyone, you know, I, I, for, I firmly believe you, you have the autonomy to do whatever you want as you, as you see fit. And, I, and coming from a city, I was living in, in Washington at the time, they ordered a total lockdown of the city. They were even threatening we, how we couldn't even go outside outside to Virginia or to Maryland to get groceries. The hell with that, come on. I, I, this is this is America. I, I get to go where I want and you know, where I please as long as I'm not breaking any laws. You can't tell me uh, that I can't go anywhere and, and do what I want with my own public health. I know better than the government does. And frankly, the economic cost is obscene. We lost so many great businesses. I mean, we saw city commissions in D.C. not even allow restaurants to, to package food, wearing gloves, wearing hazmat suits. I'm kind of somewhat exaggerating, but not even allow them to just leave it out there for somebody to pick up. We lost so many great businesses, so many great places that have been around for, there's a fish market, there's a store, Captain White Seafood, been around for 100 years. I love going to that place. Lines going out the door, but because of COVID and all the, the, the mandates and shutdowns, we just lost an amazing business. You know, it, it breaks my heart to see so many good businesses just it's, it's hard being a small business owner. I'm, I've, I've tried a few times, haven't been great at it, but it's hard to get things put together. And when the government steps in and destroys that opportunity, what, what do we have left in this country? As your second question was about 
a sky bridge to the island, uh, I'd be open to it. Uh, I, I would factor in how much it would cost, what the net benefit would be, and really do something that we didn't do with the ferry project, which is get a study going and look at what the ridership would tell us. Do, will people take it? Can we make it easier? For me, something like that would be a solution for visitors. I think residents should always have the ability to park, but we should also make it convenient for them to park and ride. I think something that works better is we have a shuttle from the island, from the mainland to the island, at least on Cortez, because you've got a, a, two bridges coming in 27, 29, starting for Cortez and then Manatee at after. Give it a few more years because it's government. Um, I would like to see a wider, a wider bridge, number one, to get emergency vehicles on and off. I talked to you know, fire districts, chiefs, and police, uh, police chiefs and, and officers. The number one problem is just getting emergency responses out there. There could be a fire out there. There could be a mass shooting. We just can't get anyone there. I mean, thank God we've got you know, the sheriffs and uh, the, the police uh, departments with boats to, to circumvent some of that. But you're still talking about delayed responses, especially for fire. And getting that third, that you know, at least a third lane in there um, is going to be a great solution I'm going to push for. But I'm also going to push for allowing um, visitors you know, some kind of a shuttle system to let take advantage of that as well. And the reason I know that works is because we've done it with LPGA. People took a shuttle from GT Bray to go out to the LPGA. Nobody complained. You know, you just have to make the solution cheap, effective, and really easy to use. A shuttle won't work if you're leveraging the same roads that we are today, um, sitting in traffic. But it will work if it can just speed right through. But we have to get on top of the traffic problem, and you know, God's not giving us more land, so we've got to get smarter about how we're using what we have. Hey, Tal. Um, I came tonight just to hear Tal. Um, full disclosure, I think I met you almost a year ago now. Uh, we've sat through county commission meetings together, have lamented kind of what's going on in local government, and I'm so excited to see you up here to to hear what you have to say because it's the first time I've been excited about what's happening in Manatee County in a really long time. In fact, they are so on top of things. I made a donation while I was sitting here listening to you. Your wife already texted me and thanked me. So <laughs> they, they know how to do it. But my question is, I moved here five years ago right as the cruise like election stuff was going on and he was switching and I was getting mailers and mailers and I didn't even have furniture yet. Oh. The mailers are going to start and you just said your opponent has money. How do we support you? I've never gone door knocking in my life, but I'm ready to. Do you have a plan in place for us to support you and to get the message out? I do. I'm looking for volunteers to come with me door to door. I'm not going to go anywhere I, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have volunteer team come with. I'm giving free shirts. They're dry fit, so it's great for moisture wicking in the summer heat. Um, <laughs> and hats, too, if that's your, if that's your thing. Uh, so volunteers uh, sign up. We'll we'll set up a group and just get get you know get the job done. I think uh, we've got you know I've been I've been getting out there connecting with a lot of residents, different groups, um, to, you know, trying to get volunteers anywhere I can. Sign locations is good. Fundraising definitely that's going to fund two things: um, mailers and signs, uh, and some stuff like the shirts and camp merchandise to get to get us through the finish line as well. I'm paying for other stuff as well. Like donuts. Like donuts. Yeah. Next <laughs> question. Under presentation, wonderful. Um, anytime I see you, I see you by Kristen. Turn it on. So my question is for her. First, can we recognize Kristen for all her hard work? What is the reason we haven't heard tonight why we should vote for your husband? <laughs> Turn it on. Now I have the mic. <laughs> well, one thing that I'll say, and he mentioned it at the beginning, I, I was born and raised here in Brainton. Actually, one of my longtime neighbors is here. So I'm sure Mrs. Potter, who's over there, can tell you a lot of stories about growing up with me next door. But what's so disappointing to me as someone who's a native is seeing what's happening in the community. I grew up here, I went to Central Library, we went to Storytime, we went out to the beach. And it, our heritage and what makes this place so amazing is getting destroyed. And we don't have people on the commission who really care about us as residents. I mean, Tal brought it up a lot of times about, you know, they're choosing developers over us. And it, that's not right, that's not the way the government should work. That's not how conservative values were. I mean, you're supposed to be governed for the people, by the people. I mean, how many of you feel like you're represented? 
Not a single hand for the cameras that are recording. I want you to know, not a single hand went off. And so I know that towel is the best decision. And that's why you will see me at almost every single event with him because I love what he stands for and what he wants to do for this community. So if you haven't signed a petition, of course I'm always in campaign mode, um, <laughs> and you're in District 3, please come up. But also understand, like he said, he's up against a lot of money. He's up against people who don't want him there. And it's because they don't want our voices to be heard. So what we really need is your support. If you don't live in the district, you can't sign a petition, but you can still donate. <laughs> yes, you can certainly door knock too. But it's really time for us as Manatee County residents to come together, to band together, and tell these special interests enough is enough. And the way that we can do that is by supporting Tal. So, I hope I answered your question. Anybody else? Okay. All right. One more. I've been door knocking the first time in my life. I went with Mark Stanek. I hope to see him on the school board. He's thinking of the kids. What's that? And it was fun. Yeah, there was one gal last week. She was so thrilled. She just loved it. I love it. I met a man who was an officer in the Navy and, and wondered what happened to his country through COVID. He was depressed. And his daughter finally said, go to the VA. There's a group you can talk to. And he went and got help. Takes courage to ask for help. But he's, he's good. But he gave me a pen that has Israel flag and the American flag on it. Gave one to all of us. That was my favorite person to meet. And they welcome us. We say we're volunteers. It's really fun. So if you would do it for Mark or Tal, it's awesome. Thank you. I enjoy door knocking. Um, I would say don't vote for anyone that gives you an awful lot of mailers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all very much for coming. Thank you.